Hi, welcome to Lab 5. We're going to be going through a little SOLIDWORKS tutorial today. I'm just going to be teaching you the basics, um, like sketching and just how to navigate the app. And after you make a little part and assemble a little part, um, we're going to actually give you the actual Digim case design uh, that we know works. <laughs> and you guys are going to customize it with a team name and a team logo. Uh, so try and think about that. Uh, as we're going through this. So you have something uh, to put on your case when we get there. So when you open your King computer, you're going to be greeted with this Apps Anywhere window. So what this is, and it is it basically shows you like every app that you could possibly use on the Kane system. I'm on my personal computer, so it actually looks a little bit different. But you should have tons of stuff on there. Um, so what you want to do is up here, you want to search SOLIDWORKS and it'll pop up as the first thing. And after you do that, you want to hit launch and then a second window will pop up and it'll say SOLIDWORKS on it again. And then there will be a little green arrow and it says run under it and you hit run. So then SOLIDWORKS will start booting up. It'll take a second but eventually you will be greeted with a window that looks like this. You might have like a secondary, um, they call it the welcome window on top of this, but don't worry about any of that. It looks kind of overwhelming. Don't touch it. Um, what you're gonna do is up here, you're gonna hit file and then new. And so there's two things we're gonna be dealing with today. We're gonna be dealing with parts and assemblies. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory, but parts are like the individual parts <laughs> of the component. And then assembly is when you can take multiple parts and put them together. But right now we're just going to be making a part. So I would designate a partner one and a partner two for this point. Um, there's going to be two parts we're going to be making and then putting them together at the end. So... Here we have the front plane, I'll make it visible. We have the top plane and the right plane. So these are basically your foundation uh, for making a part. So SOLIDWORKS and many other CAD softwares, what you do is you make 2D drawings and then you just make them fatter by, by making them 3D to uh, make 3D components. So first, let's cover some navigation stuff. So if you zoom with your scroll wheel, it'll zoom out. And when you zoom in, it'll zoom in to where your cursor is. So you see I'll zoom in here. It goes on the top of this. And then if I zoom in here, it goes on the bottom of this. If you hold your scroll wheel and move your cursor around, it will rotate the part. And if you want to get pretty fancy, if you hold control and then one of the number keys at the top of your keyboard, like one, one shows the front plane, two shows the back of the front plane, which is a little confusing, three shows the right plane, four shows the front of the right plane, five is the top plane, and then six is the bottom of the top plane. And this is a little bit easier to grasp once there's actually a 3D part, and I'll go over it again once there's something tangible, uh, because the planes are a little confusing. But something that I use a lot is control seven, which puts it in an isometric view. Um, so if you're working on a part and you kind of get turned around, you're like, ah, oh, what's happening? I don't even know where I am. If I just hit control seven, it'll, it'll make everything less chaotic. So what we're going to be doing is making the first half of your digim case. So I'm going to hide all of these. We once again have a blank screen. So what you're going to want to do is go up here on this toolbar and hit sketch, hit sketch once again. And then we're going to be sketching on the top plane. 
So once you hit sketch on the top plane, it will align it so that you're looking at the top plane and it's flat. So don't worry that um, you're in a weird orientation. So up here are all your sketching tools. Um, so you can make a line. Um, if you hit the arrow next to each of the sketching tools, you'll get um, different options. So like a center line or a midpoint line. Um, I totally recommend uh, just playing around with it because some of the names are not very self-explanatory. But today we're just going to be dealing with um, some simple shapes, uh, the circle, the line, and the rectangle. So you want to go to corner rectangle and then hit the arrow and then go to center rectangle. So whenever you see a descriptive word on uh, a sketching tool, it basically means like, how do, you, how do you sketch it? So a center rectangle, you sketch from the center of it and a corner rectangle, you sketch from the corner of it, which you'll see in a second. So this right here, is the origin of the whole sketch. This is the very middle. So I like to make sure that the origin of the coordinate system stays in the origin of my part. So we're going to do a center rectangle starting from the origin. So make sure you have um, that little yellow icon next to your pencil, which means like you are definitely over <laughs> this point right now. So just drag, click and drag your mouse and make any size rectangle. Um, don't worry about the size right now. And then hit the check mark up here. And congratulations, you made your first sketch in SolidWorks. So what you want to do is hit Smart Dimension up here. Um, so what Smart Dimension does is you can make dimensions of single curves on your sketch or dimensions between curves on your sketch. Um, this is something we'll see uh, in action as we do this a bit more. So hit Smart Dimension, and we want this rectangle to be about 4 inches by 2 inches. Um, so if you click this top line on your rectangle, and then you click again anywhere on the screen, you'll see this little dialog box show up. And right now for me, I sketched a rectangle that's 6.7306805 inches long. Don't worry about all that. You can delete it and we'll just make it four. And because the units of the entire document right now are in inches, it'll default to inches. So if you just hit four and then hit enter, now it is four inches long. And now if you do the same thing with the side of the rectangle, we'll make it two inches long. Wonderful. So, we're all done with this part of the sketch, uh, surprisingly. So to exit the sketch, you'll hit this little blue icon right here. And if you kind of move around, you can see you've created this little 2D drawing on the top plane. Um, but there's not really much we can do with a 2D drawing. So what we're going to want to do is select this sketch and go to features. Sorry if you can see my, hear my cat meowing in the background. She's very loud. Um, go to features and then hit extruded boss base. So extrusions are the heart of CAD. Basically, you make sketches and then you extrude them, which basically means you make them a little bit bigger. So when we hit extrude boss base, you'll see that SolidWorks is trying to give a depth to the sketch that we just made. Um, we're going to make it um, half an inch tall, so 0.5, and then it'll automatically go to 0.5 inches. So these options right here, I'm just going to go through them. We're not going to be really using them in this tutorial. But so from sketch plane means um, you're extruding from the sketch that you selected. Um, surface face plane means if you wanted to move uh, where you started the extrusion. So just because you made a sketch in a specific place doesn't mean you have to extrude specifically from that sketch. And that's basically what vertex and offset mean as well. It's just different ways to move where you're extruding. This little button will change the direction of your extrusion. 
And then blind basically means I'm going to give you a dimension and I'm not going to worry about anything else. And then all of these other options are um, like up to surface means I'll, uh, it tells SolidWorks that I want you to extrude until you hit something else in the part. Uh, same with up to body, up to vertex, offset is similar to the offsets um, that we just discussed. But we're just going to do a blind for half an inch, hit the check mark, and now we have a cube, a rectangular, a rectangular cube. So I guess that's not actually a cube. <laughs> um, now we basically want to start carving into this cube to create the rest of our part. So what we're going to do is hit sketch again. So if you hit sketch, now you see it won't give you an automatic dialog for selecting a plane. Now you can just select a plane that's on the part already. So if we want to sketch on the top of our little cube, I selected the top of it. And I'm going to hit control one. Oh, sorry. I'm going to hit control five. Uh, so we can see the top of the cube um, flat just to make sketching easier. So once again, I'm going to take my center rectangle and I'm going to start at the origin and make it drag and drop to anywhere on this surface and hit the check mark. So now I want to dimension with respect to the rest of the part. So I'm going to hit smart dimension and I'm going to hit the top of the rectangle I just drew. And then I'm going to select this edge that is already created on the part. And you can see they're about 0.18 inches away from each other. We want the walls of our case to be about 0.1 inches. So I'm going to hit 0.1. And now you can see that this distance is 0.1 and also this distance is 0.1. Because we made a rectangle, these two lines are always going to be the same length and these two lines are always going to be the same length. So by changing this dimension, we actually um, dimensioned the length of these lines right here. So I'm going to do this on the side of the rectangle now. I'm also going to make this 0.1 inches. And now you can see all of the lines in my sketch are black, which means that everything is dimensioned. So if I hit this check mark and I tried to move anything around, um, it won't move. Whereas if I got rid of this dimension and I tried to move things around, it does. So I'm just going to control Z <laughs> to put that dimension back. So I can exit this sketch now. And similar to how you can extrude boss, which means create something, we can extrude cut. So if we go to features, and hit extruded cut. You see, it kind of gives you a preview of what you're cutting out. So since it's still an extrude, it still has the same settings that I discussed earlier. But we don't want to cut all the way through the part. You see how this arrow is going all the way through this part. But we don't want that. We want the case to have uh, a bottom to it. So I'm going to make it 0.4 inches because if you remember, we made the entire cube a depth of 0.5 inches. So if I only cut 0.4 inches, the bottom will have a thickness of 0.1 inches. So if I hit this OK button, you can see now we have a little tray. So I'm going to hit Control-7 just to make it all nice and pretty. And now let's imagine we have two of these little trays, one on top of the other to make a box. And inside the box, you have your digim. While you're holding it, you're going to have all these sharp corners 
and that might kind of hurt your hands. So we want to get rid of those sharp corners. So what we're going to do is you don't actually have to do any sketching for this. SolidWorks is smart enough that um, you can do things directly to a um, solid body. So what we're going to do is hit fill it. And this whole big menu pops up. Don't worry about all of it. What we're going to do is select each of the edges on the outside of this rectangle. So you're going to have to do some zooming, some rotating to get to all of these edges. Yours might not have uh, a preview. Um, yours might be a partial preview or a no preview. Um, but if you put it to full preview here on the toolbar, it'll show you exactly what's going to happen to your part. We can keep the radius of this fillet at 0.1 inches. SolidWorks is usually pretty smart at automatically picking a radius for you. So often, if I'm not trying to be too picky and I'm just trying to smooth something out, I'll just do with whatever SolidWorks wants me to do. So here you can see all of my edges are picked on the outside of the case. I'm going to hit the green check mark. And now all of these edges are smooth. Awesome. I'm going to hit control seven again. So So um, let's assume that this is the bottom of the case. The bottom and the top of the case look almost exactly the same except for a few extra holes. So on the bottom of the case, you're going to have to make holes so your Raspberry Pi can have the power cord go to it and the USB cord to go to it. So if you imagine the Raspberry Pi being right about here, we're going to need access to the USB and the power ports on the side of the case. So that's what we're going to add holes for right now. So once again, if you hit sketch and hit the side of the case, I'm going to hit control one. So it's all flat. Um, up here, we can actually see the part with different outlines. So here it gets rid of the contour lines. Here it gets rid of the coloring. And what I'm going to be using here is the dotted lines. So if you zoom in on the dotted lines, you can actually see where the bottom of the case is because when you're on the outside of the case, you can't really see where uh, the thickness on the bottom of the case ends. So I'm just using these dotted lines to double check, hey, you know, if I cut into this part, am I going to be cutting into the bottom of the case or am I going to be cutting through to where the Raspberry Pi is going to be? So very conveniently and not planned at all, we are. Uh, you can see that these dotted lines line up with this bold line right here. This bold line right here is where the fillet that we just put in ends. Um, so we can see if we just cut above this fillet, we won't have to worry about cutting into the basic of the case at all. So I'm going to go back to shaded with edges and then hit control one once again. So now I'm going to go back up to rectangle and I'm going to hit corner rectangle this time because the holes on the Raspberry Pi are a little bit offset. I don't want to start like directly in the middle of where the origin is. So I'm going to make a cut, make a rectangle, sorry, um, on this line. Make sure that that little yellow icon next to your pencil uh, is there, that means that you are definitely creating a point on this line that is highlighted in orange. So we're gonna click and drag and make a rectangle. And 
And let's make this rectangle 0.2 inches tall. And one inch long. Now you can see there are some black lines and there are some blue lines. So while the dimensions of the rectangle itself are, it's fully dimensioned, you can't make it any bigger or smaller. The problem is we can actually move this side to side. Um, because when you created the rectangle, you created it on this line, but you have not yet told SolidWorks how far to the left or right you want this rectangle. So um, this can cause really undefined behavior when you start making more complicated parts. So we just want to nip this in the bud uh, as soon as you make each sketch. So we're going to hit the right of this rectangle and then we're going to hit this line on the side of your case where the fillet ends and we'll make this distance one inch so what you just did is made the distance between this line and this line one inch so we're going to exit our sketch and if you look you can see there is a rectangle on the side of your case so if we go back to features we're going to do another extruded cut and we're going to keep it from sketch plane but instead of doing blind i'm going to do up to next up to next means hey i sketched something on this side of the body i just want to cut through to the next side of the body hit the check mark and now we have a slot to put the raspberry pi power cord and USB cable. So let's save this, go to file, save, navigate to wherever you wanna put it um, on your King computer. Since you're on a King computer, I do recommend putting it on the desktop just so you can find it really easily um, later. So I'm gonna name this uh, case bottom. Wonderful. You can see that the name popped up here, case bottom. Oh, love that for me. So now uh, I would switch the mouse over to your second partner. So once again, we're going to go to file, new, part. Here we have a part. Once again, we're going to sketch onto the top plane. I'm going to go a little bit faster this time for the second partner, um, just because I went over all of this uh, a couple minutes ago, because we're going to create the exact same rectangle to start off. So cr uh, select center rectangle, start at the origin, create a rectangle, Hit the check mark. We're going to smart dimension, make it the same size as the other part of the case, four inches by two inches. Hit the check mark, exit the sketch. Make sure this sketch one is selected. Features. Extruded boss, 0.5 inches. Okay, then we're going to sketch. Sketch again, select the top of the part. I'm going to hit control five. Make another center rectangle. Dimension so that the distance between this rectangle and the other rectangle on both sides is 0.1 inches. Hit the check mark, exit the sketch, features, 
Again, make sure that this is selected, very important. Extrude cut, 0.4. Hit the check mark. Once again, we have found ourselves with a tray. We're also going to fill it this part of the case. Hit the check mark. Because we already made the bottom of the case, this is obviously going to be the top of the case. On the top of the case, what we want is a spot for the GM tube to be poking out. You don't want the case to be um, interfering with the detection of the radiation that is all done through the GM tube that's on your digim. So if I hit control five, I'm going to create a little hole about as big as the GM tube for it to stick out of the case a little bit. So sketch, I'm actually going to do a corner rectangle and you can create a corner rectangle really on any part of the case. Um, it'll all get dimensioned. So I'm gonna hit Spark Dimension. I'm gonna make this a quarter of an inch thick and then Make each side of this rectangle, oh, sorry. Make each side of this rectangle a tenth of an inch away from the inside wall of our case. I am going to talk about what SolidWorks just yelled at me about <laughs> in a second. So if you see um, the sketch we just made is totally black, that means it's fully dimensioned. If I try and put another dimension on it, it'll yell at me. It'll say the sketch will now be overdefined or unable to solve. Do you want to add it as a driven dimension? So a driven dimension means it doesn't actually do anything to the part. It's just telling you, hey, this is how long this is. Whereas a non-driven dimension, which are all the other dimensions that we've been making today, is a constraint put onto the part. So if you just leave it as a driven dimension, it'll be kind of grayed out um, to signify like, hey, I'm not going to do anything to the part. I'm just here to tell you how long I am. So here we can see that this length is 3.6 inches and I'm just gonna leave it. You don't have to have it there. Um, so now we're gonna exit the sketch. Once again, go to features, extruded cut. And because we want this all the way through the bottom, we could leave it blind and have it 0.4 inches. Um, that will definitely cut through the case as you can see by this preview. Um, but just for consistency, I'm gonna do Sorry, I'm going to do up to next and then hit the check mark. And now we have a little spot for the GM tube. I hit control seven and then we're going to save this save case top. Okay. So now we have the top and the bottom of the case and we want to put them together. So we're going to put them together through what is called an assembly. So if we go to file, new, assembly, you can have either person, either partner do this part. Um, just make sure the other person uh, watches intently as it's important. So because we never closed those other parts, you can see it says begin assembly, and choose parts to insert. And because our case bottom and our case top are open, they're like, hey, you've been working on these parts. Do you want to make them in an assembly? And we're like, yes, thank you so much, SolidWorks. So we're going to select case bottom. And if you move your mouse over here, it, it automatically pops up. And if you click, 
um, it'll place it in the assembly. Um, so now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the flash drive that's been given to you, navigate through your files, and find the flash drive that's been given to you at the beginning of the lab. And in there is a folder called Digim case, and then a date, and then my initials, because I made the case. Uh, double click it. So here are all the parts to the Digim case. We're just going to put, um, we're just going to use this hinge that we know works um, on this assembly uh, for your trial case. What you're going to want to do is after you find uh, where this file is, take hinge one and just drag it into SolidWorks. And then we can take, take hinge two and also drag it into SolidWorks. You can see that I put this hinge under the first part that we uh, dropped. So it kind of made the ground of the assembly a little bit lower. That's why you can see the shadow. Nothing to worry about at all. It's just something uh, it does to help you visualize. So now back to SolidWorks, we're gonna wanna hit insert components again and hit case top and put it anywhere on your assembly. So these are all our parts. So what we're gonna do with all these parts is we're gonna mate them. Uh, which is just another set of constraints that says, hey, you know, I want you in line with you, etc. So first we're going to put the hinge on the case. So what you're going to want to do is hit mate. And then look at hinge one. Doing assemblies is a little bit um, discombobulating. So if you if you need, like, feel free to hit control seven. This still works. So you can uh, get your bearings again. So you're going to want to find the flat part of hinge two, sorry, of hinge one and select it. Any one of them. Um, I know there's four. So you can see over here, it has face one, hinge one, one. Um, so this is just telling you, hey, these are the things we're going to make. So then we're going to go to the bottom of the case and select not the face that has the hole in it, but the face directly behind that on the outside of the case. If you just select it, um, SolidWorks will kind of make an effort to uh, do what it thinks you want it to do. And it actually got it right. Uh, so what what we're going to do is we want these faces to be coincident, which basically means I want these faces to be touching, um, which is exactly what I wanted it to do, which is awesome. So I'm going to hit the check mark and the mate window will stay open because usually you do many of these in quick su succession. So it doesn't close. So you have to reopen it. Um, but first, if you hold this part and move it around you can see that however i move it let me hit control seven however i move it those two faces are always going to be touching so i know it looks like like oh the hinge is not touching this body like what do you mean so a face really goes um an infinite distance um so the parts don't actually like need to be touching for the faces to be coincident. There's not really a way I can show you that, but you're just going to have to believe me. So we're going to keep constraining this hinge one on this bottom part, because as you can see, like this is no good. We can still move it around. How, are we, how am I supposed to know where it's supposed to go? So what you're going to want to do is go back to the hinge one and select one of these edges, um, not the one that's connected to the to the curve but the one that's connected to this flat face that we just selected and then select the top outside edge of the case and again SolidWorks, SolidWorks is going to do what it thinks you want it to do and it was right if your hinge for some reason is 
upside down like this. Um, these buttons over here will actually um, just flip the part for you um, because SolidWorks is very good at guessing, but it's not right 100% of the time. So then you're going to hit OK. And now, since there's another constraint, it's always going to be on that plane. And now this edge is always going to be in line with this edge. And again, edges are infinitely long. So like, even if I move it all the way over here, like the constraints that I put on it are still totally valid. So now, Let's put a third constraint on it. So let's select this side edge of hinge number one, and then this edge on the side of the case. Hit OK. So now it's fully defined. If you click it, and try move it around, it won't move at all. And sometimes SolidWorks will even tell you like, hey, this is fully defined, stop trying to move it, you're making me mad. Um, so wonderful. We have a hinge on our case. So now we're gonna wanna put the top of the case onto the bottom of the case. So what you wanna do is select the top face of the bottom of the case and the face pointing up on the top of the face. This is technically the bottom face, but so as you can see, because they were both facing the same direction, SolidWorks is like, oh, you want me to put these on the same plane? Like, okay. But then it just puts the parts inside of each other, which is definitely not what we want. Um, so if we're going to go, we can go to these buttons over here and select anti aligned and it'll just flip it over for us. Hit OK. And now it's, I mean, they're on the same plane, but looks a little crooked. So I'm going to select this face on the side of the top of the case and this face on the side of the bottom of the case. And SolidWorks mates them. So now we can kind of slide it back and forth. Um, but sliding back and forth is no good. Uh, we want it to be still. So we're going to select this front edge on the top of the case and then this front edge on the bottom of the case. Hit the check mark. As you can see, can't move them which is awesome. This is good news for us. So now we have this lonely little hinge over here that we want to mate. So take the flat section of the hinge, click it, and then select this face on uh, the side of the top of the case. SolidWorks automatically made it. And then select this, actually, go down here. Select this edge on the hinge. And then this edge on the case. Ooh, where did you go? Select OK. As you can see, sometimes when SolidWorks is trying to guess, it kind of moves all over the place. Oh because I did the wrong edge. So if you do the wrong edge, as you can see, um, we want this hinge to be on top of this hinge. And I said SolidWorks make these two edges aligned. So what I want to happen will never happen. Um, so hit the X on the mate. And on the tree over here, so here you can see the bottom of the case, the hinge, the other part of the hinge, and the top of the case. But down here is mates. If you hit the arrow, it'll go, um, it'll show the mates from oldest to newest. 
So see this mate that I just made? I'm just going to delete it. So now I can, I can move this around again. Because what I actually want to do, hit mate again. I want to select the face on the inside of this part of the hinge and the face on the outside of this part of the hinge. And all of the other mates that we've done have been coincident mates, but here we're going to do a co-centric mate, which means I'm going to take this circle and center it inside of this other circle. So I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, now these hinges will be aligned. And because there's not really a simple way to um, constrain the hinge in this direction, you can literally just move the hinge around until you see gaps between each section of the hinge. Try and make them as equal as you can. Um, and then hit the check mark on the mate. And if you want to double check that, like, hey, how do I know that stuff isn't touching on the inside of this hinge? We can go to, uh, we can change the view and hit hidden lines visible. And it's a little messy because there's a lot going on. Uh, but you can see how this circle and this circle are not touching. So this circle is the um, rod in the hinge. I'm trying to highlight it so you can see it. Yep, it's purple. And then this circle is the outside of that same hinge. Three D modeling is something that conceptually, it's you just have to get used to it, um, visualizing things like that. So hit Control Seven, you can look around, and go, hey, this is a digim case, and you can pat yourself on the back and your partner on the back, share the love, um, file, save. It's gonna say rebuild and save the document. Um, which basically means like in an assembly, if you move stuff, uh, rebuilding is a process that SOLIDWORKS just basically has to reload everything. Don't really worry about it too much. Just rebuild and save the document. And as you can see, these actually, this actually has a different file extension than the parts that you made. The parts that you made will have SLD part, SOLIDWORKS part. This is an assembly. So don't worry if you're in your in where you put um, your parts and you're like, ah, I can't see my other parts. It's because it's a different file extension. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to name this Digem case. Then I'm going to save it. Congratulations. You made your first SOLIDWORKS assembly. Or maybe it's not your first, but you made a Digem case <laughs> SOLIDWORKS assembly. So now go back to your uh, flash drive file and you're actually going to open up this Digim case assembly. Uh, just double click it. Ah, I named it the same thing. So now what we're going to do, um, as beautiful as this part is, uh, it's not actually the case you're going to be using. So close this part, this assembly, and then it's going to show you the top of the case part. You're going to go, no, I don't want that right now. So close that, and then it's going to show you the bottom. Close that. And now you're going to be left with the screen that you started with. So navigate to your flash drive and double click digimcase.sd. 
SLDASM, which is the assembly. Um, and now you can see this is uh, the official uh, Digim case. So I'm just going to go over some of the things that uh, are on this case that were not on your case. So as you can see, this one has two hinges uh, because it's a little bit bigger than the one that you guys made today. These holes are for mounting the Raspberry Pi onto uh, your case because the, I don't know if you remember from your uh, Digim build, but the PCB sits a little bit above the Raspberry Pi. So you actually have to bolt in the Raspberry Pi so that um, they don't uh, just jumble around inside of the case. Um, there are two holes here. Um, that's just because the uh, power cord and the USB are a little bit further away from each other and we didn't want to make just one giant hole in the side of the case. Um, and then you can see some clasps. So when you close the case, it doesn't just open up on its own if you flip it upside down or something. Um, right here is where you're going to put your team name. Right now it says Rad Health Engineering. And also really important to note is that this case is assembled in an open position as opposed to the case you guys just assembled uh, in a closed position. This is because when we 3D print this case, we want it to print in this orientation um, because it makes it easier for the printer, which is something I will discuss later. So what we're going to do is first we're going to add the team name to your guys' case. So we're going to navigate to, let me open this up a little bit more so you guys can see. It says Digim case bottom. We're going to open this up. And then we're going to go down to student name. If you click it, this little window will open up. Hit edit sketch. So now everything will kind of be grayed out except for the bottom of the case. And then this text should be in blue if you hover over it so it turns into orange. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> hover over it so it turns into orange and then double click it. And then you'll see this little text window. Um, you can just type whatever you want. So I'm just gonna type team one, which is a really lame team name. So team one, please pick a better team name than this. <laughs> uh, you can see there's also different um, uh, formats that you can put the text in. So right now it's bold. You can also put it in like italics if you want to, uh, just stuff like that. So once you're done picking a team name, hit the check mark, and then exit the sketch. And it'll say your team name on the side of it. So now we want you guys to put a logo on the top of your case. So what you're going to do is you're going to select this up here to totally exit uh, the bottom of the case, because we're not going to be editing the bottom of the case we're gonna be editing the top of the case because we want the logo to be on the top so you guys can see it. So if you hit control six, you can view, this is going to be the top of the case. Um, I'm going to collapse the bottom of the case in the tree over here and open up Digim case top. If you click the part and hit edit part, and then select sketch, and then select the face on the top of the case. So all of this extra stuff is here. Um, that's all that's different than editing a sketch in a part. You really just wanna be dealing with these tools over here. So this is where you're gonna make your logo. So important to mention is that you don't want to make whoop, parts of your logo too small for the printer because 3D printers are not very precise. 
And if you want it, want your logo to come out looking clean, um, you want it to be as simple as possible, um, which I know makes it really hard uh, to make a logo. But I really think that, I mean, with all of this space, you guys can get pretty creative with it. I'm just going to make a little smiley face, but you guys can make whatever you want. So to make my smiley face, he's going to have a really, <laughs> really tight looking smile. So I'm just going to make some concentric circles. And then I'm going to make them, oh, a tenth of an inch apart. I really don't recommend making any uh, parts of your logo less than a tenth of an inch wide, um, just so you can really see what's going on. So then I'm going to make a line right across here. And another useful tool, it's called Trim Entities. So you can see that like I made a closed shape here and I don't really want any of the rest of this. So if I just take Trim Entities, you can see if I hold my cursor down, it makes a little line. If I run this line through entities that I don't want, it gets rid of them and I am left with a gorgeous smiley face. Okay, so once you have the sketch for your logo done, you can see my mildly um, terrifying looking smiley face. Uh, exit the sketch. And then hit features, extruded cut. Uh, the thickness of this part of the case is actually point one inches, so I would make it a uh, 0.5, sorry, whew, 0 0.05 is what I meant to say. Um, and then hit OK. And then you can see a uh, little smiley face or whatever your logo is. So exit the part. Hit control seven. That is so scary looking, isn't it? Okay, sorry. I'm gonna stop talking about it. Okay, so now we're gonna get this ready to 3D print. So what you wanna do is hit file, uh, save, well, first save it. Um, and then it's gonna say, oh, do you wanna save all the individual components? And you're gonna say yes. So file, save as, and then you wanna make it into an STL file in order to export it into something that um, Ultimaker Cura can read. And Ultimaker Cura is a software we're gonna jump into in like 30 seconds and it makes a uh, code that 3D printers can read. So you can just overwrite the STL that's already in your flash drive. It's going to say, oh, it already exists. I'm going to say yes. Replace it. Um, here it's going to show you how many triangles uh, your model is, which is 
always kind of fun for me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you're going to hit, yep. And then that's it for SolidWorks. You can sh close this out. And then go back to your apps anywhere. And here you're going to type in Kira into the search bar. Um, again, mine is a little messed up right now. Uh, and then it should pop up. And then similar to how you launch SolidWorks, you're going to hit launch. And then the second window will pop up. And you're going to hit Kira and then run. So I'm going to open up Kira. So you should be greeted with this lovely window. Um, so before you even do anything with the part, you're going to want to want to go up here and you're going to want to hit add printer. Um, you're going to hit add non networked printer and then go down to Ultimaker three and add that. So this presets um, the build plate size because all 3D printers have a different uh, size that you can print. So now what you're going to do is you're going to hit this file icon and go to your USB drive and select the STL that you just saved. And hopefully you should see your Digim case uh, with your logo on it. So 3D printers print from the bottom up. And for any structure that's above it, it needs to create support that's below it. So the goal whenever you orient a part for 3D printing is to make the most area touch, touch the build plate, just so the less things go wrong. So obviously, this is not optimal for printing. It's way too tall. It's it's all going to go wrong. I really just don't do this. <laughs> so if you click the part, you should see a little coordinate system appear in the middle of it. And on the side, you'll see little commands. If you hit the third box down, it's rotate. And then select, select place to align to the build plate. And then hit the top of your case. And it should automatically snap down uh, to the correct orientation. And I also like to go to move and make sure that it's centered just by making all of the coordinates zero. So you should see the uh, case centered in the middle of the plate. Okay, so once you have your part oriented, you're gonna wanna go up here to your settings, select the, select the fast profile. Initial layer height should be 0.2 millimeters. Your wall line count should be at two. Make sure your infill density is at 10% and your infill pattern is cubic. Make sure your print speed is at 85 millimeters per second. And your initial layer speed is 25 millimeters per second. You do not want generate support to be on, which is important. Enable prime blob should be on. Build plate adhesion type should be skirt. If any of these settings aren't showing up for you, you want to uh, hit this little settings gear wheel and then look for it in this very long line of settings. Um, each computer might be different. I don't know what's showing for you and what's not, uh, but just know that this is where to find everything. So if you close that and hit slice, it should be at about five hours and 54 minutes. Uh, and if you recall, you signed up for a uh, 3D printing time of about six hours. So make sure you show up at the beginning of your time because it's going to be cutting it to the wire. So hit save to removable and um, it should save to removable as Ultimaker 3, Digim case case, Digim case, uh, dot gcode dot gz. Um, and you can eject your flash drive because you're not going to be using it anymore. So when you get to the Deuterstat, you're just going to go up to your printer 
and plug this in. First, make sure you talk to whoever's at the desk and be like, hey, I'm here from engine 100, section 900. I reserved a printer. They should tell you what printer you reserved if you don't remember it. Um, but sometimes if they're unhelpful, uh, you should be able to check your reservation on your computer. So that's it.